Hi, welcome. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Um, I know there's a lot of things going on and you may all have some questions. So please feel free to raise your hand. Um, we have Paula Sandy with us today who will be monitoring the chat and she can uh, unmute you and allow you time to ask your question. Katie Marshall's here to answer questions about pool testing and as well as Mark Petrolik. I'm Amy Yoder, if you don't know who I am. Um, I am the co-chair of the COVID-19 task force here at SUNY Erie. Um, so I wanted to just give everyone a little bit of an overview of where things stand today. Again, emphasizing the word today. Um, we, once we moved into orange level, we received some guidance from New York State as well as SUNY in terms of what we need to do to complete the semester. Um, that is our ultimate goal. Um, we do want to be able to complete the face-to-face -face classes that still have some components of their courses that still need to meet here after Thanksgiving. And that was our original plan that we had submitted and was accepted to SUNY. Um, now with the, the county numbers being at the rate that they are, um, as you all know, we moved into orange level. Um, and what that means for us is the most important thing I wanna emphasize is that we're a little bit different than a K through 12 school. Um, we have been testing our students since the end of September, and we are continuing to do so um, for those that will still remain on campus after Thanksgiving. What this mandate also included was a clause that we had to also test all of our employees. So we're happy to announce that MOUs were signed and agreements were made with all of our unions, allowing our staff to participate in pool testing. The cost of the pool testing is covered by the college, so it is not something that's going to be charged for you. So if you haven't participated before Thanksgiving here and you are a staff member that's coming back on campus, we are working with all of our departments right now to compile a list of the staff and students that will be coming back on campus after Thanksgiving. It's important to note um, that we did cancel any existing appointments that were on the schedule already. It was because of logistics that we had to do that. So I wanna emphasize that does not mean that you're not gonna get rescheduled. We will be doing outreach to everyone to reschedule or get you scheduled for your COVID-19 pool test if you are going to be here on campus. So, um, you know, don't get nervous. Don't think that there's something going on. Um, we're just, we need to start over basically in our system and have a clean, concise, accurate list so that we know exactly who needs to be tested and when they're going to be. Um, we did add additional times and locations to our pool testing. So allowing more access for uh, individuals to be able to test closer to their home campus. Um, I don't wanna have to see people have to drive all over the place. So we're doing everything we can to accommodate that. Keep in mind as you're working and you're hearing from your schedulers or you go to your pool test site, these are all volunteers who are working them. So I cannot implore on you and Muff, if you do anything today, do me a favor, be nice, show compassion. These are all people who are not being compensated additionally for the role, very, very important role that they're playing in keeping us all safe and helping us continue with the semester. So please be patient. We are reaching out to everyone, but we're working on that list now and making it as accurate as possible. If you think you are someone, especially if you're a staff member and you think that you're supposed to be on campus, please consult with your department head. They know where to get that information and they will move that up the chain and get that to me so that that information is accurate. So I will, um, Mark, do you have any updates that you wanted to add? Uh, the only thing I would, the only thing I would add is that uh, Amy and I have gotten a lot of calls today as far as possibly moving into a red phase. As of now, nothing has changed. Um, we talk to the county probably two or three times a day. And even if the county does move into the red phase, as far as our plan, it really doesn't change. We've we've over-engineered this. Uh, Amy and Katie have over-engineered our pool testing so that we were ready just for this issue if it came up. Um, so just be patient. It uh, will we'll be fine. That's it right now, Amy. Thank you. I can't agree enough. Um, Katie, did you have anything you wanted to add that I might have missed? Uh, the only thing you did mention that the pool testing is free. And I did want to mention that when you register online um, to take the test through the SUNY site, 
it's going to ask you for insurance information and you can put NA or zero. Um, we get a lot of questions about that. So you don't need to give any insurance information, but it won't let you pass through the registration um, application online unless you put either NA where it asks for text or zero where it asks for an insurance number. Perfect. So I wanted to open this up. This is less about us presenting to you. We presented numerous times. There's um, several YouTube videos that you can look on our YouTube site um, that do give an overview or more detailed information about pool testing, contact tracing, all of that. But I did want to open this forum up more for questions directly. So please don't hesitate to raise your hand. Paula's looking at the chat and we'll answer whatever we can for you. You got us. We're here. Not all at once, boys and girls. Hi, I just had a question this morning. Um, so Tracy wanted us for coverage in our office and payroll and in HR. Is that changing at all? Should we, I mean, I did contact her to see if it was changing. Uh, or, have you heard back from her yet? I haven't, but um, we are all remote. Uh, payroll is anyway, but she does. She did want some coverage in HR and in payroll, so we are going to take each one take a week, you know, to reduce the amount of testing. I don't know if that's is that affected by this at all, because then we receive bills email after that. Um, I would I would wait till you get your response from Tracy. I don't want to make okay. any decisions for her area, and she'd be able to. Um, she did speak with me a little bit, so I think that um, probably her. Whatever her response will be. Um, so I'm that's sure what we should go with. Okay, just yep. want to double check. I didn't know which way to go with that. And no um, thanks. Sure. Thanks for everything we're doing. I think we got a question in the chat, did we? Yeah, yeah we did. Bob, Bob Germoni, you're live. Any questions? Um, don't you hate that cell phone, Amy? <laughs> oh, Bob. <laughs> um, so I have a staff member that uh, I'd like on campus on Tuesday. Um, is that going to be possible? So now he's already on the essential list. So I'll start with that. <laughs> um, is it absolutely necessary? I could hold off until like Thursday. Perfect. Let's do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That was Let's my other question. <laughs> Here's your answer. Let's do that. Hold off till Thursday. Hey, Amy. Yeah. I'm looking at that question from Bridget. Oh, sure. Salvaggio. Yeah. What happens if someone tests positive in your pool? I am considered essential and part time. Do we need to quarantine? Do we get paid during our quarantine? So the first thing I would say, Bridget, is if your pool comes back positive, either Amy, myself, Rachel, Chris Lalka, or one of the other contact tracers may give you a call, and they'll say you have to quarantine until we get the reflex back. The way the, the pool testing works is all 12 individuals of that pool go downrange to uh, SUNY Upstate Medical, and it takes them 24 to 48 hours to get that reflex test back. Typically, it's only 24, but sometimes it does take longer. And at that point, we'll know who of the original 12 was actually positive. The other 11 will be cleared to go about their jobs or whatever else they need to do. Now, as far as do you get paid during the quarantine, that's a question best addressed uh, through HR. Um, we do have COVID benefits uh, mm -hmm. through the state, but I would I would go through HR. I hope that answers your question, Bridget. Okay. Uh, next up, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull um, Joe Gonter off of mute. Let me just see if I can unmute him here. Uh, Joe, can you hear us? I can. Okay. Yeah. Why don't you ask your questions about about clinicals? All right. Um, I have multiple students in different situations. First off, I got my entire evening paramedic class coming off of quarantine as of today they are today was their clear date so the questions i have is do they have to be retested before they can go into clinical areas again 
Um, if that doesn't happen until next week, that is a problem because I had students already lose two weeks of clinical rotations and now they'd be losing another one. Um, the hospitals are, um, I'm gonna say funneling students through entrance to a specific entrances to the hospitals. So they are getting screened when they arrive at the hospital. Um, and then the hospital clinical sites are making the decision whether to let the students, you know, continue on into the hospital for their clinical experience. But I wasn't unclear as to the status of the school's perspective on that. The second question I, second question I have is I have a student that literally just called me as I was getting on. She said she just came off quarantine. She was retested um, and tested positive. Um, even though she is, um, she was told she is because she's two weeks into this, um, she is no longer able or symptomatic or able to spread, but yet people may test positive for months afterwards. So again, her concern is, am I able to go to clinical and, and what's the situation there? So. Uh, obviously, this is new for all of us, and, and so I'm trying to sure. navigate the waters. Absolutely. So let, let, me, let me take your questions in two phases. The first answer to your first group of questions, Joe, is that they do not need an additional test prior to going to their clinical site unless their clinical site requires that. So that that's kind of specific to the to the sure. location in which they're taking clinicals. But at least from our perspective, they do not. The second student situation, I want to take that offline. So can we give you a call a little bit later? Because I want to get a little more information on that. Sure. Okay. Perfect. Do you have any other questions, sir? Um, I let me let me ponder that because there's <laughs> a million things going through my head right now. So I know. No problem. I'll, I'll relieve the floor and ask to be unmuted again if you want. So okay. or I can sit quietly unmuted. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. All right. I'm going to um, I'm going to Chris Django next. Chris, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, so my question is specific uh, with the foundation office. We do receive bills and hopefully we receive some donation checks. If we go red, will I still have limited access so I can get to my mail and then leave campus? Okay, here's, here's the one thing and I wanna encourage everybody. Forget about the colors right now, because again, the colors are not gonna change everything that we have in place for today. Having said that, there is powers that be that are above us that could make decisions on things and change the world, but that could happen to everybody. So we don't have to worry about the reds right now. To answer your question, Chris, um, and I believe that was in the email today, if you plan on being on campus from a staff perspective for less than 60 minutes each week, you can come in, grab your mail, and not have to be on the tested list, as long as you are abiding by that less than 60 minutes per week. Excellent, that's all I needed. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Okay, next up is Betty. Um, Betty, you're unmuted, can you hear us? Oh, here I am, yeah, sorry. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, I was just wondering, my son did already schedule a test for Wednesday. Is he supposed to cancel it? Just wait for the phone call? They will be canceling it for him and they will be contacting him directly. Okay. And does he definitely have to have a test before Thanksgiving break or is that changed? Oh, I'm sorry. He has a test scheduled for tomorrow? Yes. He should absolutely still keep his test for tomorrow. I thought you meant next week, Wednesday. No, so no, okay, so it's tomorrow. Yep, yeah. he should still go to his scheduled test. Yes, that is correct. Okay, thank you very much. No problem. Okay, Brenda Spike, you are up next. Brenda, can you hear us? Brenda, can you hear us? Okay, Brenda had put a question in the chat. Yeah. Um, so her question was um, with childcare being open, including next week, um, when will childcare staff be tested? Same time we're reaching out to them. They are on the essential list. So they will be contacted to schedule a COVID test next week. Okay. 
Um, next up on the list, we do have a list of people, just so people be, please be patient, um, is Amy Barlow. Amy, I've unmuted you. Can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Okay, so first our staff are considered essential workers because we take payments. Um, how do I set our staff up for COVID testing so that they can work on campus next week? So Amy, what you should do is reach out to Paul and make sure that you're on that list. Talk with him first. And as soon as he puts you on the list, we will reach out to you to schedule those tests. Okay, and I will do that just for myself or for all the staff? For all your staff, yep. Okay. But talk to Paul Daniel because I did speak to him this morning about that. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, next up is going to be Sue Holdaway. Let me get to you, Sue. Sue, you're live. What's your question? Sue Holdaway, can you hear us? Okay, I don't know what's going on with the AAC staff today. Um, let me look for her question in a second, but in the process, I'm going to bring Patty Lucido up. Patty, you're live. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Hello. Okay. Hi, Patty. Thank you, everybody, for doing this again. Um, Amy, I know I reached out to you earlier, but I know I have students. Um, I had encouraged the students to jump on and listen. Great. Because I think it's, you know, perfect coming from all of you, the experts in this. So we have students that are in fact uh, on the list and due to come back onto campus to take a required exam that we can't do, um, you know, without them being on campus on December 7th. Yep. It was recommended that they test on December 1st and that they had all been removed from that. They received a phone call. I understand from the student too that they also just spoke to somebody not too long ago and they're gonna reschedule everybody. The concern is, if they're scheduled for the 4th, will they get that back in time for the 7th? Maybe, maybe not. Um, <laughs> well, in, in, to be perfectly honest with you, I would say that even if they got the test on the 30th, um, we're not in charge of the lab. Um, we are at the mercy of the lab in some ways. So from when they get the time, the, the test, it could take three to four days until we get results for that. Um, so we are trying to prioritize students, especially based on the fact of when they need to come in. So that's why we did, um, and I know that you sent that in and we do have that information. And we, I'm not joking when I say we spent many, many hours into the night last night compiling all of the rosters and information from students. So we're, we should have all of those lists completed today and our pool testers will be, excuse me, our pool schedulers will be reaching out to all of those students. They may very well get very close to the same time that they were originally scheduled, but because there was a change, we did have a lot of courses that were able to go remote and did not need to maintain face-to-face. -face. We wanted to have accurate lists as much as possible. So just, I know you're getting a lot of panic call from them, but encourage them to please read um, President Reuter's email. Um, they can check this out. This is being recorded too, so we're gonna send this out, but just tell them to be patient and they will be contacted directly. Thank you so much. And the students also can test someplace else. Is that correct? Absolutely. And if you have students that are testing someplace else, they can send those test results to either myself or Katie Marshall. Okay. Thank you all very much for all your hard work. And I can see the sleeplessness in your faces. <laughs> I'm Thank tired. You. I know. I don't you know. We kept going. I'm like, I got bad bags to be talking to people today. <laughs> Thank you. I, I really do appreciate all that you're doing and you're doing a wonderful job. So thank you keeping us safe. Thank you for your support, Patty. We always appreciate it. Okay, um, I did find out that the ASC staff apparently is on, um, they have audio on their computers but and the chat box, but they do not have microphones, so that's why they can't talk to us. So okay. to hold away the question that came through on chat, if, um, if staff are due back on campus on the 30th to work and your appointment was canceled, is it okay to get tested any other day that week? Yes. Okay, and the next one came to came from Teresa Kalinowski in the bookstore. Um, Teresa wants to know if um, where are we? 
I lost her. Oh, will students be able to come on campus to return their rental books at the bookstore? They're due by December 28th. As long as it is 30 minutes or 60 minutes less or less during that week, they can come onto campus to return their textbook. Yes. Um, and then Sue Holdaway also wanted us to reinforce that City and North Child Care will be open the week of November 30th. There is a lot of misinformation being given out that no one is allowed back on campus the week of the 30th. Um, our student parents are a little bit confused about that. Yes, definitely. And that's why we did include that in um, President Reuter's email this morning as well. Okay. Um, next up on the microphone is Lauren McCarthy. Lauren, we have you unmuted. Can you hear us? Um, yes, thank you. Um, I think you actually answered my question uh, from earlier about um, testing next week. So I know with the, the bookings, we can only schedule people up until tomorrow. Um, so um, that will change, yes, but not for next week. You got it. Okay. That's Thank awesome. you, Lauren. Lauren's one of our another uh, one of our over a hundred volunteers that are helping us out with this, and she's doing an awesome job. So thank you, Lauren. Okay. Uh, next up in the chat box was Myra Lopez. Myra, we put you live. Are you there? Yes. So okay. go um, ahead and ask your question. This was the first time that I did the pool testing, and I took the test on Friday. And I wanted to know when should I start to worry. Um, that I haven't heard back from anybody. Um, you have no reason to worry. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Yeah, people. Um, Amy, do you want to do you want to let people know that they only get a call if the pool uh, you're only going to be contacted? Positive. Yep, you're only going to be contacted is if, if your pool is positive, and then from there, um, you will be contacted and told to either quarantine. Um, so if your pool pops positive, everybody has to quarantine. And then from there, you'll get another call from us saying you have COVID and that's a whole other conversation okay. or you're free and you're released from quarantine. So we only okay. contact positives. Okay, good. I don't want to hear from you guys. So keep up the great work. I don't want to call you. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, next up in the list is Denise. Brosman. Denise, hold on while I get you live. Uh, Denise, you're live. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? We can. Okay, thank you. I am um, one of your COVID hotline volunteers. I did have a question from an essential staff member at the South Library who is supposed to report to work Monday the 30th. Will she be contacted to be tested or can she come on? I mean, how does that work with the Monday? She needs issue? to contact her, her, her department chair, her department. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, next up is going to be Joanne Kolmerauer. Joanne, you are unmuted. Go ahead. Hi, Amy. Um, Hi. Made a lot of appointments, you know, on the weekend and things for people and I, I tuned into this a little late. So I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sure you answered it, but just to be sure, because I'm still getting calls that I pick up occasionally. Um, can you just go over one more time? And I'm sure you're ready to pull your hair out. Um, we're not scheduling appointments anymore next. There's no appointments next week. Is that correct? There will be appointments next week, but right now we're not scheduling anymore. We're canceling the ones that are scheduled and then we'll have a new list. As you know, I was asking for all of that information from everyone. We're compiling that data right now of staff and students that absolutely need to be on campus for the remainder of the semester after Thanksgiving. And we'll be using those lists to contact people to schedule. Okay, so all those calls that were made, those were people. So we're we're trying to obviously bring the number down just using those lists you're getting from us. Correct, correct. Got it. Drastically reduced. I mean, there was one, uh, one of the deans, I mean, they took 50% of their courses, which were face to face, no longer need to be face to face. So that's a huge chunk of, of student population that doesn't need to be on campus any longer. So we worked through those lists, tried to get clean data on that so that we're contacting the appropriate people um, so that we can get them tested and scheduled as soon as possible. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. And then just to confirm, but if someone asks me, Joanne, can I run in and grab um, my charger for my laptop? They don't need to be tested. As long as they're less than 60 minutes for that week, we are fine with that. 
totally get it. Okay, and this day, oh. this day I can stop people calling me going, can I please come in oh. and water plants? <laughs> yes, you yeah, can come right. in and water your plants, but then you gotta leave. And then you gotta leave. Okay, and the checkpoints will be open next week. Um, uh. Yeah, actually what we're gonna do with the checkpoints, the checkpoints are only, we're gonna narrow those down. We're gonna get a communication about that, but um, we're generally only gonna have one checkpoint open at each of the campuses, which is closest to the pool testing site. So. We will get more information out about that, but essentially we're going back down to one checkpoint for right now um, on each of the campuses. Okay, thank you. Um, okay. And there's, there, there is some rationale, if I can just jump in real quick, Paula. Uh, the 60 minutes comes from contact tracing too. So again, I, I don't want anybody to think that we're just randomly throwing something out of the air. Um, when you do your contact tracing certification and training, 60 minutes is is kind of a um, indicator of exposure time. So if we can keep people under 60 minutes, that's less exposure that you have. So if you did come into contact with somebody with COVID, if it was less than 60 minutes, you're in passing, you're doing distancing, you're wearing your mask, chances are you don't need to quarantine based on that. So we did do that with some rhyme or reason. Uh, next up is Bridget Saldaggio. Bridget, I know we answered a question before uh, for you, but I'm not sure if you have another one, so I'm unmuting you. Can you hear us? Okay, I'm gonna read her. She had a question that came through at 212 on the chat. Um, how are we being contacted to schedule a test, our work extension or cell phone? Will, be, will testing be done during our, during our scheduled work hours at the campus we currently work at? That's what the, our intention is. Um, we have lots of testing times, locations. Um, I don't think that we've had to move people from different campuses very, very often, and it's usually because someone has a specific schedule or they're limited for time, um, but that's exactly what we're doing is trying to get everybody, including students, scheduled to the campus of their choice. Okay, um, we are going to Tiffany McLeod. So give me a second to get to you. Tiffany, can you hear us? Oh, yes, hi, I can hear you. Okay, go ahead and ask your question. Um, so I was referring to the email um, this morning and under support services, it states all libraries and tutoring services will move to remote operations after November 25th. Um, I was just hoping to get some elaboration on that. Um, what I would suggest, Tiffany, hi, how are you, by the hi. way? Hi, um, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. What I would suggest is contacting your department head on that. Um, okay. But yes, essentially what we're doing is, and I will be honest with you, I pushed really hard um, back at SUNY trying to keep those computer labs open. Mark can agree with me. I yeah, tried no worries. Absolutely not was what Valerie Dent said. Yeah, we were told absolutely not. So um, that means that we do need to keep that area as remote as possible. So what I would suggest is contacting your department head and speaking to them directly about that. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to be going back to Joe Gonter. Joe, give me a sec. Joe, you're live again if you want to ask your next question. Hey, Jill, before you even go there, I think that I would like to take that call. We need to have off, off camera conversation about that just because it, you're, you're so different than everyone else. <laughs> That's the best. I just don't want to confuse things. So we'll set up a time that um, me, you, Katie, and Mark can talk if that's okay, Joe. All right, then I'll hold my question until then. So awesome. Thank I'm, you wor so I'm working from home, so I'll shoot you my home number. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Okay, um, I'm going back to Lauren McCarthy. Lauren, you're live. Sorry, this is my last question. Um, I was just curious if we knew what offices are actually going to be open next week. Um, I heard Bursar will be there, but I don't know if that's every campus. Oh, they won't be. Okay. Most, assume most offices, let's think back to April. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Assume most offices will be remote. So that means from a student service perspective, if you're dealing with a student, you want to contact them and refer to, um, you know, I know our website, the COVID website has information on how to contact people, use the directory. 
Um, you know, make sure that you're giving good information as to say, you don't need to come on campus. This is the person that you need to contact. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you. Sure. Um, Teresa Kalinowski from the bookstore had another question in the chat. Can the bookstores be open for students during the hours of 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. during the week of November 30th as well as through December? No. So the answer to that is no on the week of November 30th, because we're trying to limit the number of people on campus period that Correct. week. But the the stores can be open the hours of nine to three um, after that, beginning the week of December 7th. Correct. As long as staff are in the testing pool, which I know Sue has submitted their names um, so that they are getting tested. And then as long as students are just coming in again for less than 60 minutes, we're fine with that. Okay, um, I have no other questions in the chat or nobody else raising their hand. Um, I do want to give a shout out to Lauren Watkins who, from nursing who gave us a shout out for to thank us for our hard work and timely responses. I think that was directed at you guys, not me. <laughs> oh, you were up late. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm up late every night. Um, okay, um, I don't see, uh, does anybody else have any other questions? We're happy to stay on and answer. Um, we just want to make sure that we're getting as many of your questions answered as possible. And as Amy had um, mentioned before, um, oh, Carrie Thomas Whiteside is asking, can you further clarify about the library? We found out when the email came out. Um, Carrie, just as, as a quick aside, almost all staff found out what was happening with offices and support services when the email came out as well. Those decisions were made fairly rapidly based off of what has been coming out of the Department of Health, um, SUNY, and um, the state. So we're, we're working through things as quickly as we can, but this, um, this complete shutdown next week was um, something we had not necessarily planned for, but no is ne necessary at this point. Amy, do you want to add to that? Um, I would also add to, to, to definitely speak to your, your dean, your department head in that area. And I think, Polly, you said it best. I get it. I, I understand some of this information comes fast and furious and you might not have all the answers, but we're trying to respond as fast as possible and get ahead of things too. So Mark and, and my goal this week was to come up with plans that are ahead of and anticipate things that may come in the future so that it's not a huge shock that we don't go in a certain direction and the two days later completely have to pivot. So I apologize, you know, I'll take ownership of 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 kind of the, the rapidness of some of the communication that goes out. But like I said, just talk to your department head, just talk to your chair. Um, speak to them. They're going to be helpful with this and we'll do the best we can. We're all on the same team here when we're trying to do the best by our students and keep us safe. Okay, Myra Lopez just posted another question in the chat. Myra, do you want to go live on that one? Sure. To reiterate, because sometimes my brain needs more than 15 times hearing something. Starting after tomorrow, we work remote until further notice. If that's the direction that you were given from your department, head, yes. Okay. Can I become uh, an essential worker? I don't like being at home. <laughs> hey, Myra, this is Mark. That's the exact thing we don't want. You exactly. can't get the number of faculty and staff. They're like, I don't want to be at home. I don't like my wife, husband, child. Pick one or all of the above. I don't like um, the cat. <laughs> All right, the cat. I'm going to add a new one, the cat. But that's exactly what we're trying to avoid. Okay. Thank you. Um, thanks, Myra. We just had another question come through from Jeff Reed. Give me a sec to let me get you live. Uh, Jeff, you're unmuted. Do you want to ask your question? Jeff, can you hear us? Okay, I'm gonna read his um, question off the chat. Oh, he doesn't have a microphone, he just chatted us. Okay. Um, checkpoints are to be done in the buildings where pool testing is going to be taking place. Is that what I understand to be correct? Is pool testing being moved into post building with the Swan Street entrance for city campus? No, we still have a checkpoint at Fleck too. Um, but keep in mind, we also have pool testing going on in the health center at city. 
Um, no. So we will, city wasn't, didn't have changes to their checkpoint. I'm, I apologize, I should have, I should have clarified that it really was south and north that there will be changes back to reverting to one checkpoint. Uh, Bob Germoni, your answer to your question is no. <laughs> Um, jokingly, Bob posted, can he not be essential? <laughs> Negative, Ghost Rider. The pattern is full. <laughs> oh, wait. A lot of people are chiming in on that one now. Um, sorry, guys. We don't make that call on that one. You need to talk to somebody at the uh, higher level than us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any other questions for the gut of the order? Um, again, Amy said, as Amy said, we're going to um, we're going to be we have have been recording this, so we will um, send this link out to everybody, um, staff and students, so you can rewatch this. Um, we will probably go through a lot of these questions as well um, and re reiterate them in written format for people. Should anybody um, you know desire to have those in written format, um, but I'm not seeing any new questions coming in at this point. So. Um, I'm doing a last call on questions since we can't do last call in, you know, the pubs in Western New York any longer. Can I just jump in one more time, Paula? Absolutely. Um, so, I, I, you know, as everybody's planning your Thanksgiving, you know, keep in mind as much as I downplayed red because it really doesn't affect our plan here. Red affects a lot of things, including the economy in this area, um, obviously, a red distinction is higher. Our hospitalization rates are very high. They're highest they've ever been during this pandemic in Erie County. So as you're getting together, I understand the importance of it. I'm dealing with it, my own family, you know, making decisions that are smart as opposed to what my heart wants to do. And I think that's, you know, kind of the, the place that we're at right now. We have to put our head first and our heart second. And I know that stinks. I know it sucks. I have a mom. She lives alone. She doesn't want to not see her kids, but it just makes sense. It really does. And I would rather be able to celebrate with her under much warmer circumstances because I hate cold weather and not have to worry about COVID affecting our world. So, you know, be smart. That's all I can tell you. You know, I, Lead by example, we want to continue the semester. We want to be able to come back to campus. Some of you want to be essential. Some of you don't want to be essential. So be smart about it. I want things to get back to normal. That's the goal here. So help us help you. Uh, we did have one more question come through from Joanne Kolmerauer. Um, I am going to read her question off, but I'll put her live just in case she wants to ask it too. Um, so Joanne's asking, has everyone that was scheduled before been contacted as of today to let them know they've been canceled. Joanne, I'm working on it. Okay, I because I've I had two questions come into me like just in the last few minutes about people who were um, scheduled. All Cancel cancellations will come through um, by email. Okay, all right. I'm sure that's a colossal task that you're it under. Is. <laughs> Every <Okay. day>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. So they may not know yet that they're canceled. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Thanks, Joanne. Um, looking again, I don't see anything new that's popping through at this point. Nope, nothing more. Um, so any last any last thoughts? I know um, you know, Mark, anything from you on your end? No, I'll be talking to the county tonight and tomorrow, um, and Amy and I will make any updates. But again, our plan really doesn't have to drastically pivot. I would just ask that people be patient. This is this is a roller coaster, and you got to look at the big picture. That's it. Thank you, Paula. Sure, Katie. Anything more on your end? No, I'm good. Okay, um, Amy. That's it. I would say wear your mask, keep your distance, wash your hands, and go Bills. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and just a reminder to everybody that we will, um, you know, communications do come out via your email account. So while I know that we're all on, um, you know, going to be off for a few days for Thanksgiving, 
Um, we do encourage you to keep checking your email. Um, not that we're expecting you to work, but you know, any, any major messages that are gonna come out are gonna come out through your email account. If by chance something is emergent that comes out um, while we're off for Thanksgiving um, over the weekend, um, we will send a um, message out through the Rave Alert system to remind or to let you know that there is a message there for you that you should check. Um, so if you have not signed up, we do encourage you to sign up for, um, to receive Rave Alerts, which does let you, you know, get you a text message if you so desire it. Um, and that is um, happy Thanksgiving to you, Patty. Um, as well, and Joe, thanks for the thank, thank you and the shout out on that. Um, Amy and Mark and Katie have been doing um, yeoman's work on keeping us all above water on this whole thing. So um, thanks again, guys. Um, if, you know, hopefully we won't, we won't have to talk before then, but um, happy Thanksgiving to everybody and we'll um, see you next week. Bye everyone, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Bye.